All right, guys, random article dropped by Bungie here. Destiny 2 Into the Light and the Final Shape Gameplay Preview Recap. Today, we shared a peek at some of the amazing work our team has been doing to make the Final Shape an incredible experience when it arrives on June the 4th. This article recaps today's developer gameplay preview, and they all some content available today for all players with Destiny 2 Into the Light. Heading into the Final Shape, Prismatic Subclass. For the first time, Guardians, who harness Prismatic, We'll be able to mix and match Arc, Solar, Void, Stasis, and Strand, combining them to unlock new potential and power and customization. You have to see the, the pictures right here, guys. It was nuts. The last thing I expected. But this isn't just about remixing abilities. You'll be able to break the known limits of light and darkness by entering Transcendence, a state only possible when using the Prismatic subclass. By dealing both light and darkness damage, you will charge two meters that, when filled, enable a temporary state of transcendence that unlocks a new unique grenade ability and weapon damage bonuses. Now, new build crafting possibilities. Along with Prismatic comes aspects and fragments to further customize your build and enable combos you never thought possible. And good news, players only need to unlock these aspects and fragments once to get them for every class. You'll also be getting more aspects and fragment slots than ever before. Now, wait, wait, wait. So it shows some gameplay right here. Let's just take a look at this real quick. So this is Titans. As a Titan, you can just quickly start using your arc abilities to jolt all the enemies around you and then kind of finish them off with like the cool blades of Strand. And it's so satisfying to see how fast you move. It's a very like fun, destructive build that you can just like destroy everything around you. And it, it, it's super fun. Um, Did she just suspend with a tangle we like the cool blades of strand and it's so satisfying to see how that's a warlock aspect not a warlock aspect look at the hud that's wander so so am i getting this right not only are we cross merging different subclasses are we going to be able to cross merge aspects too everyone keeps saying expand the Just quickly expand start the using your arc abilities to jolt all the enemies around you and then kind of finish them off with like the i love that here on the left side if you notice this guys you see knockout you see radiant you see amplified and then on the on the right side notice they got the buffs and debuffs split here left side you've got You've got your buffs, amplification, radiant, knockout. Right side, or at least right side, looks like it just has its cooldowns. Tango cooldown, heavy handed cooldown. Is that not incredible? Holy, holy hell. That is amazing. But hold on. We like the cool blades of Strand, and it's so satisfying to see how fast you move. So, right here, I also see slice here at the bottom left hand of the screen. Not, but it also looks like text are cut off there. A little bit of text is cut off. It's a very like fun, destructive build that you can okay so isn't that because he dodged and his weapon has slice because when he swapped off it went away i don't i don't doubt that um also what's facet of protection no idea but the 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 point i was making out is it seems like i'm trying to get a placement of where everything is so slice was at the bottom left hand of the screen you know I, i'm looking on the screen just the ui layout there so but we'll, we'll continue looking at the rest of this chat all right so for hunters let's take a look at this real quick let me copy this video url i love um, being a hunter and having gunpowder gamble and blowing them up and then we're like oh wait, wait wait what if you could slow enemies you could throw out, you know, your shurikens, and then you God, look at that. Yeah, so facet protection again. You've got unraveling rounds that are now presented here to, to this startling auto rifle, and then gunpowder gamble immediately. You blow them up as well, and it's like, okay, I didn't think I could ever do those two things at the same time. And, and then again, again here on the right side, chat. After he did that, look on the right side. You got firepower cooldown. So Monty has really cleaned up the UI here. Or any issue right now where you have so many things happening that you don't know what buffs and what debuffs and what cooldowns are currently active. They've split it up on the screen here, which looks amazing. I know right now we're supposed to be you know, like focusing on the, the gameplay aspects, but I, I can't help but notice the UI. We've got gunpowder gamble cooldown on the left, firepower cooldown on the right. What just happened? Monty, I was talking really good about you guys. What, the, what just happened? Oh, read the top, top text. Yes, yes. Deve things are in development right now, subject to change. There you go, chat. Things are subject to change. Okay. My point is, though, point is, you can see more things happening. You've got more things giving you information. That's good. This is good. Okay. Now, Warlocks. Let's take a look here at Warlocks. I know we literally just watched this earlier, but I, I think it's good that we've let it, like, kind of permeate the brain right now. So, let's just take a look. I think when we play test, I'm probably going to be running... Probably Warlock with 
Um, this, the lightning surge build where you have arcane needle for three melee charges. That's so crazy. And then you combine that with lightning surge. You can throw bleak watcher on top of that. Dude, dude, this whole sequence is is so wild. So he's rocking, he's got he's got the strand melee. So he's got the ability to hold three melees. But when he slides, because he's rocking electrostatic mine. Wait, is it electrostatic mine? Oh, this it's just called outright lightning surge. Okay. Let me back up real. So he's rocking strand melees. So he can hold three of them. He's rocking lightning surge aspect, which means when he slides, it actually will convert this. You'll see it right here. It'll convert his melee to lightning. Notice right here, it's converting to lightning. I know it's like very hard to tell what's going on there. So the moment he slides, he converts it to lightning surge, but he's able to hold three melees. This is when it gets crazier. He's holding a a healing grenade right here hold on let me let me just let me just take a step back. it is it is a healing grenade. he's holding a healing grenade he backs up he charges his healing grenade oh, that's what it is he's rocking bleak watcher but with healing grenades that's fucking wild he's got a healing grenade but bleak watcher aspect with lightning surge you can throw bleak watcher on top of that for just like a little extra crowd control or you can throw a devour and so you're, you know, jumping in, lightning surging, that's killing a bunch of stuff. You're activating Devour. That gives you infinite sustain, effectively, to stay in the fight. Dude, that's good God. Now, they also showed off the exotic class items. I think we need to take a look at this one more time because I feel like this, the flashy stuff is definitely the subclasses. But this is such a big deal. In the final shape, we're going to be making these new exotic class items. These new exotic class items allow you to steal perks from other exotics and combine two perks together into one single exotic. The perks that come on them are actually random rolled. One thing that is going to be fun is while your super energy is full, picking up an overpower overcharges your super granting and bonus damage. So it's that spirit of the star eater. So that's literally star eater scales. Not everything though, unless it's everything and they just don't have enough room to put it in the, into the text. Then right here, spirit of the Fidian. Oh my God. Oh my God. Less. You're able to take mm. exotic traits from other classes from other items on other exotics from other classes and put them on your class. I took, I, Aphidians, it's Starrier on a hunter. Give me that Aphidian stompy loadout. Oh my God, can you imagine? You got a hop. I'm, I'm ruining PVP. You got a hoppy hunter now with extremely quick handling. Oh my Lord. I will say this is gonna bring back one hell of a grind oh since it's all Lord. random. It's all random, dude. This is wild though. This is like, developers what they do in their playtime when they want to just play god you know devs gone wild this is devs gone wild chat just imagine any of the different combos that you could possibly use but even like damage boosting exotics and and i don't know if this would be possible but what if you could do star eater scales and celestial nighthawk together what happens then dude a one a super shot with celestial nighthawk after picking up orbs just just that's a nuke. That would be a nuke. All right, I'm going to continue reading this, though. Guardians can push their prismatic builds even further. With new exotic class items coming in the final shape, exotic class items work specifically with the prismatic subclass and will each roll with two random exotic perks inspired by selection of other exotic armor pieces, even from different classes. That means a hunter could have an exotic cloak with some of the unique qualities of Assassin's Cow combined with parts of Lyra's Handshake. Oh, my God. Oh, well, there's my question. Dude, you go in, you freaking, you punch something... That build's gonna be broken. You go in this and you're getting a damage buff with Lyra's handshake. That is insane. On the other hand, Warlocks could get an exotic bond roll with perks of Apothesis Veil and Star Eater Scales. And Titans could get an exotic mark with parts of Ophidian Aspect and Precious Scars. Good God. Now, these are the, the actual marks themselves. They do look beautiful, man. They're the class items, the cloak, the... the you know, you know what this is done though. Why would you ever rock a normal class item ever? If again? you can't get what you want, I guess. I mean, I mean, I think they said it only works on a prismatic thing. If you, I think it, that's what it says. Only work while while on prismatic. Yeah, I mean, will you ever use regular subclass now? I mean, anymore? less. Literally. I mean, am I ever going to use another subclass after this point? It is very true. Exactly. I, <laughs> uh, dude, I don't think I'm I'm ever going to. I mean, once prismatic comes out, guys, I, I think I'm just going to main that. Can you imagine players that don't have prismatic unlocked? playing you in pvp they're gonna be like all right he's got it he's he's got strand what the he's got solar wait a minute he's got art 
Dude, that's just, the biggest paywall on the planet, though, if you think that about is, it. That is the biggest paywall ever. They're going to they're gonna be... And look, I remember the first time when I came to take... Like, when Taken King came out, the first time I got killed by someone rocking shade stuff, I was like, what the hell just happened? This dude just rolled on the ground all over the place and shotgunned me. This is going to be like a thousand times worse than that. You know what, though? I'm here for it. I'm going to be honest. I'm fucking here for it. I'm, I am completely down. I cannot wait to combine all this together. Now, meet the dread. By the way... We should have done a bet on this. This is way beyond the initial just subjugators we were going to get. This, this. They definitely made these in the, the three months that they dude, delayed. I'm just blown away. I think all of this was made in three months because pre-orders are very important less. They would have shown everything in the Vidoc last year considering they just had the state of the game and it was received so poorly. There's no way that they were like, we're just going to keep this hidden. Dude, Bungie blows their load as quickly as they can. It's not possible. Brothers. I, dude. I think, I think they've been hauling ass. All right. Now, Subjugators and Tormentors were just the beginning and now are joined by the full force of the new enemy faction, the Dread. The Grim takes, takes flight like bats with guns and use their screeching voices to press your abilities. The Husts are melee bruisers that can still try to take you down even after they have been destroyed by unleashing a geist. The Attendant and Weavers are Stasis and Strand Wilders, respectively, who will use their darkness powers to freeze you in place and pull you across the battlefield. You'll have to adapt and find new tactics to defeat these new foes in battle. Gotta say, they do look very, very tough. Despite us being heavily overtuned in this next expansion, I will say that this group of, of enemies that we're about to be facing, like, they, they, they look difficult. I would actually like to see, like, if we had, like, Cabal forces come inside the Traveler with us, how quickly this new enemy faction could poop on Cabal, right? And more to come. We have a lot more to share about the final shape before you can play it on June the 4th. The first bit of information comes tomorrow when we will drop a Death Inside article with more information about Prismatic. Oh! All right, so they're gonna, they're probably about to load up on everything and tell us how we're gonna be able to mix, mix and match all of our different subclasses. Okay, now Destiny 2 Into the Light is live. The time has come. Destiny 2 Into the Light with the two month content update open to all players starts today. The enemy has launched an attack to prevent humanity from assessing the portal into the travel. The stakes have never been higher, but when has that been a problem for Guardians? That's right, guys. We have this going on right now. We're getting error coded out of everything, but we're playing it. So far, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, the bit that we have been able to play, we'll have guides on this as well. Uh, but this includes all of our old weapons from Clues. Fallen Guillotine has come back. Edge Transit. These weapons, by the way, some of them are like best in class. Mountaintops are part of that. And they started with six weapons this week. We're not going to go over everything, every one of these. This is the kind of stuff we've already covered. Whisper and Zero Hour missions have also made a return. It is whispered this week. Zero hour will be a month after today. Uh, now, new challenge, Pantheon. We're keeping our upcoming PV challenge close to the chest until it begins on April 30th. Let's just say that Pantheon involves you, your fire team, and an increasing angrier bear a group of raid bosses. We don't want to spoil who you face off against, but it'll be from encounters currently available if you want to start speculating. Though a few of them might have a twist. We'll share a few more details on the overall structure and reward and rewards in the twid later this week. Okay, so this week's swap will have Pantheon details. Uh, PvP maps and updates. We have three new PvP maps dropping on May the 7th. They've been designed for 3v3 modes and are called Eventine Labs, Cirrus Plaza, and Dissonance. We'll share more information about all three soon, but for now, we have a new modifier for Crucible Labs called Hardware and some changes to the competitive playlist game months. All right, and then combat sandbox tuning. There's also been a number of, of combat sandbox tunings that we're going to be doing pre and post testing on. Guys, that's pretty much it. Everything else we covered in the patch notes, which we'll have a video on. But let me jump over to this article that was just recently shared with us. Rumor, Bungie is working on Destiny 3 codename Payback. It appears that Bungie is currently developing a new Destiny game codenamed Payback. A recent Reddit comment has started speculation among Destiny fans, hinting at the potential development of Destiny 3 under the codename Payback. Although rumors can be dubious, this particular one holds weight as part of what was revealed is now officially confirmed in today's The Final Shape Gameplay Preview livestream. On February 28, 2024, a Reddit user named 326382721877 posted a comment and the Destiny 2 leaked subreddit about a new system coming with the Final Shape expansion called Prism that will allow players to mix and match abilities from different subclasses. Fast forward to this week, Bungie has officially confirmed that a new subclass called Prismatic will be introduced in the Final Shape expansion. So the guy not only nailed the leak, but nailed the name structure. Okay, all right, I don't know. Anyone here know if Prism has been leaked yet? 
Since there's been no answer yet, I guess I'll leak it. Bungie is working on a system called Prism that will allow players to mix and match abilities from different subclasses. The Reddit reply reads, this is one of the things being, being worked on during the delay. Imagine throwing a lightning grenade while on solar, a proc devour and rampaging with Stormcaller. Dude, is this like Luke Smith alt Reddit account or something? Now, is Bungie working on Destiny 3? Destiny 3 codename Payback is reportedly in development at Bungie as revealed by the Reddit user in the same comment. Link suggests that Destiny 3 could mark a seismic shift in the franchise's mechanics, moving away from the class-based system to allowing players to spec into any ability. Below is the full comment regarding the rumor Destiny 3. Destiny 3 is, was, I don't know, in development under codename Payback. The comment reads, one of the big changes for Destiny 3 is, was again, I don't know, classes to no longer exist and allow any character to spec into any ability since lore-wise, there is no reason you couldn't. Hunters explicitly learn to blink from warlocks, and blink isn't tied to a single element, hence the logic there. That's true. Although the idea of such a drastic change in the franchise is intriguing and may excite many Destiny fans, it is crucial to approach these rumors with a healthy dose of skepticism and a grain of salt. The Reddit user claims they received this information from former Bungie employee employees. No, this isn't a speculation. I've actually talked to a couple of former Bungie employees who told me about these. The reason I'm saying maybe is because they, they are former employees and therefore don't have the most up-to-date information anymore. User replied to comment under the same thread. Destiny 2 Executive Creator Director Luke Smith has teased the future of Destiny 2 and the franchise in the Final Shapes preview livestream, saying that Bungie will reveal more details on what's to come in the world of Destiny 2 after players face the witness in the upcoming experience. Expansion. Destiny 2 The Final Shape is set to launch on June the 4th, 2024 on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Ah, uh, I don't know, man. Let me let me just say this as far as at least the people I've talked to. This is also this is in game development, but this is also directly in Bungie. Timelines can change very quickly. For instance, before 2020, the thought of making a Destiny 3 was completely off the table. It was it was almost as just stated as an impossibility. And then suddenly going into Beyond Light. Destiny 3 was was being talked about. It, it, it was being talked about. So what I'm saying is things shift. Just like One Second Matter was a game being, you know, rumored to be in development. And then next thing you know it, it was canned. And it was actually canned back in 2020, 2020, 2021, something like that. So what we're getting right now is what I would consider to be Destiny 3 like content. I mean, Prism, that's Destiny 3. The only other thing I can think of that would justify a sequel is if Bungie took that next big jump and I don't know, maybe just gave us a huge overhaul to the game itself. Maybe like a, a graphic overhaul, uh, start everybody over from you know scratch essentially, and then remove the limitations like they said there, where if you're on a Titan, you can blink, you know? Maybe take an open world approach. Do keep in mind that if there is gonna be an overhaul of such 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 a thing, and if, and if it is gonna be a, of great magnitude, they're probably gonna have to cut last gen consoles. You know, this is probably gonna be only for current gen and future gens. Like it, it's probably gonna cut PlayStation 4 and the old Xbox. Box. What if they just find a way to transfer D2 to D3? That's also a possibility. You know, this th th these are things that you could do with D2's current, you know, I would, again, I'm not speaking from a mechanical or engineering sense. I'm, I'm speaking from based on like certain games that have done overhauls and just continued that same game. For instance, didn't, isn't Final Fantasy 14 getting the, it's getting like a huge graphic overhaul, right? Unless there's some like major, major mechanical changes, but let's just be real. Prism is a major mechanic change. It is. It is a major mechanic change in itself and they're still able to stay. So that's what I'm saying. Going from Destiny 2 to Destiny 3 outside of starting fresh, which I, I'm not necessarily completely against, but completely starting fresh. My my question is, is, you know, why the jump there in, in um, in sequels. I will say that there there are two different camps. Well, I want to say two different camps. In conversations with folks when it comes to Destiny and Bungie, a question that was asked a long time ago and that was posed to us, what are aspects of Destiny 3 that you would like to see in Destiny 2? And, you know, there was some some talk and dialogue around that. This is way back. But the talk of customizable subclasses was brought up. And so a lot of those things in conversation was in, eventually implemented in the Destiny 2. Prism was one of those that, I'm going to be honest, I, I just dreamed of. I never thought that that would become a reality. We just dreamed about it. And here we are. Lore-wise, it wouldn't make sense for us to start fresh unless our guardian isn't the same. The only way we would start fresh is if there's some sort of weird time shift skip bullshit with the the vex and suddenly we have to we're a completely new guardian 
I will say Destiny 3 will lure, lure, lure in new players for sure. But if they are going to go with the D3, I think they should go, I mean, full sin MRPG this thing. I'm talking open world. Instead of just like, hey, I'm running around. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load into this dungeon, which is all right. I mean, I'm not exactly against loading into the dungeon. But wouldn't it be cool to be running around the map and then you discover the dungeon? You've got a team of people that are like, hey, you want to come hit this thing with me? Let's do it. And you go into the dungeon with them. Look, 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 look. Everyone that's in there saying copium, I just want you to know, you came into today's stream today saying there's no way we would get an enemy faction, new enemy faction, and there's no way we could get a new subclass. You want to come at me now? Huh? You want to come at me? I think some people now? said we'll get a new subclass. We just didn't think it'd be what it is now because this is crazier than a new subclass. There were some people, but there were a ton of people in here that did not think we were going to get a new subclass, myself included. I, I personally thought that only three supers and three aspects was not enough. I was like, this is all we're getting for new subclass based well, stuff less i think that's exactly what bungie was going to ship until everybody was like hell no i'm not buying it pre-orders went to hell and that's when bungie was like okay we got to crank this up and the people that want mm -hmm. a lot of eggplants from today's stream includes my believers and bungie employees you guys made a lot of eggplants you had insider knowledge so i'm just i'm just pointing it out but i completely understand because if i had your knowledge i would have went all in too we were very upset and but, with, but this was made that. in three months though i mean i i just don't buy that you know what i think Les? Yeah, I, I think I, don't buy that. I, I think it was made for what's to come in the next cycle of content and bungie is moving everything up to now all i, I know you. is they've cooked that's all i know all i know they is do. right now they have cooked what if for mm -hmm. whatever reason they made the content and here we are i'm excited to see what they present to us and we'll, we're gonna get even more information tomorrow and we're gonna get pantheon news on thursday so all around great stuff slap that like button like your mama told you right <laughs>